Hello, and welcome to Applied Imagery's Getting Started series. This multi-part series is designed to get users proficient in the tools and capabilities available within the QuickTrain Modeler software. This chapter covers a real-world example workflow for searching online repositories for point cloud data, assessing the quality, processing a new tiling scheme, and performing vegetative analysis on the point cloud data. Let's get started with this real-world example by looking at the point cloud toolkit, trying to find some data, merge, and export out a cropped AOI. I open up my Point Cloud Toolkit. I'm going to select my files. Click on Open. And we can see that we have thumbnails for all 16 of our files. I'm going to use my scroll wheel and my right mouse button to zoom to my area of interest. And I'm looking for this riparian zone here. I'm going to use my lasso tool and just draw a rectangle along my area of interest. We can see that it intersects four separate files, the AOI over here. I'm going to leave it as a group, which will do the merge, leave the native sampling so that it won't thin out the point cloud. I want to crop it to the AOI, and I want to import it directly into Qt Modeler. I'm going to click Do It. Qt Modeler has now cropped and merged the data, and has now loaded it. I can toggle on and off my height colors, as well as my intensity values here. I like overlaying imagery, so I'm going to click on the Import Texture from WMS. I have my Google Maps satellite selected and click Retrieve and now Accept. I can close this window and now I have imagery draped on top of my point cloud. Now I want to assess the quality here. I'm going to left click on the point cloud chip. This is my model information and I'm looking at my number of points, my density, and the scale which is the inverse of density. I'm also noticing I have a rather large range between the Z min and the Z max and that usually indicates some outliers. I can see that in the histogram as well. So that's something we're going to want to take a look at. I'm going to click on close. I also want to check some of the attributes here in the files. I'm going to hold down the shift key and left click a point. And now I can see all the attributes associated with that last file. I can see that there's classification here. So this data is classified and some other attributes associated with last. Now I know this data is classified, but I want to see what classes are here. So I'm going to click on the color by QTA button and choose color by classification. We can see that we have multiple classes here in the legend. And as I scroll around, I can actually see I have a couple of outliers here above the data as well as below the data. It looks like the data below the data is classified as low noise, so that shouldn't be a problem removing it. But as I look around, I can see my, my high noise is class 18, but it looks like I also have some valid points that are class 18. So I don't really want to crop directly by class 18 because that'll remove some of the valid points. So let's go ahead and get rid of these low noise points. I'm going to go to analysis, filtering, QTA discrete filtering. I'm going to slide this window over so you can see. I'm going to filter by classification. Click on pack attribute into filter channel. And by holding down control and left clicking this class, that deselects this class. And now you can see those class seven points are gone. Again, I could use this by holding down the control and left clicking the class 18 points, but that removes a couple of the valid points. And I, I don't really want to do that. I'm going to turn those back on and go ahead and click crop model. So now those class seven points are now gone. I can close this window. We have a couple of outliers up here and I'm gonna use my screen select tool to go ahead and select these. I left click to draw my polygon, right click to end, and I can control right click and I bring up this context menu. I'm gonna cut those points by clicking on the cut and selection. Click on yes. And now those points are gone too. The data is looking pretty clean now. Let's do a quick density calculation. I'm gonna click on my grid statistics button Make sure my variable is set to density. Click Calculate Metrics. Click on Auto Set. And now we can click OK. So now we have a density map draped on top of our data. And besides the water body, we can see that there's really no glaring omissions. I'm going to turn off my density map and turn my imagery back on. And the last thing I like to look at to check the quality of the data is synchronizing with Google Earth. I'm going to click on the Google Earth Sync button. Google Earth opens up. I'm going to split my screen, and as I zoom around, it should show me that same perspective. I'm going to turn off my Google Earth Sync and make Qt Modeler full screen again. Next thing I want to do in this workflow is generate a bare earth model. There's lots of different ways to do that. I'm going to just show a different way. I'm going to go to Import, Import Model Data. Since I already know a little bit about this data, this should be a little bit more streamlined. I know they're LAS files, L-A-Z, so I'm going to bring that as the import format. I'm going to create a surface model from them. 
I'm going to go to my point clouds, select all my last files. I want to process as a group, which does the merge. I want a one meter dem. I can click on the classification field, and I just want to exclude everything except for my class two. And that will generate the bare earth model. I can see that my geotags are good, so I'm going to leave trust header extents, and I'm going to click go. And now I have a bare earth model loaded in with the point cloud. I'm going to toggle off my vertex colors and just zoom in a little bit. I'm going to rename my surface model to bare earth dem and click OK. I'm going to toggle that off. I'm going to turn on my point cloud vertex colors again. The next part of this workflow is I want to classify my buildings. I can see that this data is already pretty well classified but we can add a building class here. So I'm going to go to Analysis, Classification and Extraction Tool. And because this data is already classified pretty well, I want to set some classification rules. I actually want to keep all my classes except for the class one, which is unclassified. I'm going to go ahead and click OK. And so that means QTMLR won't overwrite any of the classes except for the class one. Down here decides which classes are going to be written. So I'm going to leave my class two and my class six, I'm going to turn this off. I also want to extract my building outlines, roof vectors, centroids, and extend down to a ground. Since we just created our bare earth model, I'm not going to do anything down here, and I'm going to click go. Now that that's finished, I'm going to close this window. I'm going to click QTA color by classification. And I'm going to clean up my scene a little bit by turning off the centroids, the building outlines, and the roof vectors. And let's zoom in a little bit, and we can see that the blue class represents my class 6 buildings. I'm going to turn on my surface model and turn off my point cloud and show some of the exported data sets. So we have building outlines, which are draped to the bare earth surface. We also have roof vectors, which are three-dimensional polygons, as well as building centroids which represent the center point of each building. Each is tagged with additional data, which you can find by right-clicking and clicking on Open Marker Manager, and you can see all the additional information tagged to each building centroid. Each of these features can also be edited by double-clicking. It's easiest to edit by turning on the point cloud again. And as you drag the node, it'll adjust the polygon itself. Additional editing tools can be found by going to Edit, and then Edit Mode. Now that we have our bare earth model, it's easy to do AGL analysis above ground level. So I'm going to turn off my roof vectors. I'm going to go to Analysis, AGL Analyst. And there's a few algorithms to choose from. Since I have my bare earth model already loaded, I'm going to choose Loaded Model and click Go. And I'm going to compare it to my bare earth dem and click OK. Now you can see the point cloud is now colorized based on height above ground as opposed to the absolute height value. We can scale those heights by dragging the scale slider bar back and forth. We can filter the data by dragging the filter slider bar. Let me turn off my building outlines. And as we drag that filter slider bar back and forth, we can see the points are being filtered based on their height above ground. And we're able to do that because each point is tagged with a new attribute called AGL. Hold down shift, left click a point, and now you can see that new attribute there, AGL of 13.3 meters for that point that I just clicked. Generating height profiles across point clouds and surface models are also useful. I'm going to zoom into my vegetation here, generate my height profile tool. I left click around, right click to open up my profile analysis tool, and here we can see the heights of each of these trees. Clicking this mask to area and 3D button shows us a slice of the data in the 3D view. Close that window and all of our data comes back up. And another way to exploit your data here is by holding down the shift key and right clicking and that drops a drop line. A drop line is a vertical measurement from any point clicked up or down until you hit the minimum maximum point. As I go through the data set just hold down shift and right click and I can calculate a bunch of vertical measurements. So we've merged and cropped point clouds into new files, created bare earth models, generated building outlines, roof vectors, and centroids, and some measurements. To export each of these, simply right-click, 
each file and go to export to the appropriate file type. Point cloud generally is LAS or LAS. Service models is GeoTIFFs. All of our vectors are typically exported in shapefile, DXF, or KML file formats. Markers has a number of different file formats to choose from as well. But if you want to export everything all together and either share with someone or come back to it as a later date, recommended that you export to a portable workspace. And once that data is exported, you can bring it back into Qt Modeler simply by dragging that workspace back into the Qt Modeler scene. If you have any questions or feedback about the content of this chapter or any other topics in the Quick Terrain Modeler, please reach out to us. We'd love to hear from you.